this command line basics video, we're going to be looking at a command called grep, uh, which is a very, very useful command. And uh, I can't tell you the number of times that uh, I've been looking for something, trying to figure out where does X come from in my code. And, uh, and someone will say, grep is your friend. Um, and grep is your friend. It helps you find strings within files. So if you're trying to find text uh, within any kind of files on your system, grep is going to be able to find that for you. GREP stands for Global Regular Expression Print, um, and regular expressions I find generally sort of scary, um, but GREP is, is extremely useful without needing to know any kind of regex wizardry. So uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look at it. Okay, so to get us started here, I am in a... Uh, a local installation I have of, of Drupal. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is just the example I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to do an ls so you can see what I have in this directory that I'm currently sitting in. Uh, and I just mainly want to point out that I have individual files like the .php, .txts, and then I also have a bunch of directories. Um, and uh, I just so we can see uh, how grep works uh, with both of those. Um, so grep is the command, G-R-E-P. And uh, so I'm going to do the most basic grep command uh, that there is, which is just grep. And then I'm going to type the string that I'm looking for. And in this case, I'm going to look for the word theme. And I'm going to put it in quotes. Um, and then I'm going to say, what file do I actually want to try and find this string in? So I'm looking for the word or the string theme in index.php. And it returns one result. And it actually shows me what the line is. So. In index.php, there is a line uh, of text that has that, and it has that string theme in it. That's grep. Um, and you can use grep just like that and be done. But I also want to show you a little more stuff. There's, there's, there's more flexibility in terms of how you can use grep. Now, uh, in that command, I was looking for an individual file. Um, but if I put an asterisk, it'll look through all of the files that are in this directory. And so you can see I'm getting a lot more results back now. Um, and uh, when it's looking through multiple files like that, you can see I have install.php, so it tells me the file name, and then it prints out the actual line. Uh, and there's also stuff in update.php, and you can see each of those files has multiple occurrences of the string theme. Um, the thing to, that I want to point out here, though, is that it only looked through the files in this directory, so update.php, install, index. It didn't go through any of the directories, like themes. I would imagine the word theme appears in there quite a lot. Um, so uh, when you do that asterisk, it's just going to look through all of the stuff in my current directory. Um, now I can, uh, let's go ahead and just do a grep on that themes folder, because I know there's going to be stuff in there. Um, and if I just do the grep on that folder, I get nothing back. And that's because it's a folder. It's not a file that contains strings. If I put a slash asterisk and say everything inside of the themes folder, because there are files in there, then I can get some results. And you'll notice that it's telling me in the themes directory, in the readme.txt file, these are the lines that have that string that I'm looking for. So let me, I'm going to pop into the themes directory real quickly. Here's the readme.txt file, um, and that's what it, it found. Again, there's a whole bunch of directories in here. Um, but it didn't find any, it didn't look for the string inside the directories, just inside files. You need to remember this uh, with grep. Um, and so what I'm going to do to correct this, let me, I'm going back up to my root here. So instead of uh, just doing, you know, grepping for the string inside of the themes folder, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to add a dash r. Um, and common with other commands, dash r means recurse. So go through all of the directories and keep drilling down into child directories until you get to everything. Now when I do that, I'm getting a lot of stuff back. You can see I'm getting tons and tons of stuff back now because, well, the word theme appears a lot in this directory. Um, so you can see it's going down into themes, garland, themes, push button, and then there are files within those directories. So the, the dash r, really important uh, if you want to look through an entire series of folders. Um, don't use the dash r if you just want to look right with the files within a particular directory and not go further. So, okay, I'm going to leave that top level directory and just work in the themes directory here now. 
uh, for a little while. So this is where I am. I have a f one text file and then a bunch of directories. Okay, so I'm going to change things up a little bit. Uh, and instead of searching for the string theme, uh, which would give me a million hits here, I'm going to use something else that will limit uh, my results. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to looking for username. Uh, now I could just, uh, so if I want to search you know, throughout all of this, I could use a star. Uh, but again, remember that using that is just going to give me the files that are in this directory, which would just be readme.txt. None of the directories uh, would actually get searched. Um, and so to do that, I need to go back and put in this dash r to say go recursively through directories. Then I have my string. Uh, and now I can do a star. You can also do uh, a dot, which means uh, in in Linux speak, dot means the current directory. So from this directory, um, and then that R will recurse down. So I run it that way, uh, and you'll see I have two different files. So chameleon theme and this template.php in the Garland folder. Um, multiple results within those two files. Um, that's a bunch of stuff to look at. Um, I'm going to show you another handy thing. Um, to help you really zero in on what it is you're looking for. I'm going to run the same command, but this time I'm going to add another option uh, in that dash series of options we have. So it's dash r to recurse, and I'm going to add the letter n, and when I run that, what it's going to do is display the line number that that actually appears on within the file. Uh, okay, so this is a little messy. Uh, it's a lot on my screen, so let me, I'm going to highlight um, the result set here. So this is this is what I got back. The stuff that's highlighted. It's the same result as I got previously. The 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 number of lines and everything like that are all the same. Just you can see it gives me the file name and then a colon and a number, and that number is the line number within that file. So I can go to that, open that file up, and go directly to that line number, and I'll be right where I need to be. So it's very handy. So you can just zero straight into where it is. Okay, let me clear the junk off of there, right? We're back in our themes directory, and uh, let's have a look at some more fun options. Um, sometimes getting all of those strings back is uh, overwhelming, and you just want to know what files have the stuff, not the actual lines. If you use L for just listing, so I'm doing dash RL, it'll just list the file names and it won't give me all of those results, right? There were several results in each of these files. So we have chameleon and template, same files, but it's just not listing every single thing. And then from there I can zero in and say, oh, I want I want Garland's template.php, and then I can grep just in that file. And it just helps you sort of narrow down your search results and not get overwhelmed with a wall of text that gets kind of spit back at you. So I like to use that for like a an initial rough trying to sort out which files have it, and then I can dig in deeper. All right, so let's look at some more fun options we can do with grep. Uh, I'm going to do dash v, uh, and I'm going to look. I'm going to keep this to a specific uh, file here with theme uh, string theme readme.txt. The dash v is going to do reverse. So I want all of the strings, all the lines in the text file that do not have the string theme in them. So you can see in my result set, none of these th these three lines that got uh, that I got as a response have the string theme in them anywhere. So dash v means reverse. If I go back and take this v out and just run it straight up, you'll see each of the lines that are returned has the string theme in them. So dash v can be very handy if you're trying to weed things out. Uh, sort of, you know, in a backwards kind of a way. Um, and uh, just, I'm going to just do this again, uh, but with the with the N option, just so you can see N again, um, but also just c to make it a little more clear what's what's happening here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to grep uh, with the V and the N so we can see line numbers. And you can see, I'm doing the reverse. Do not, lines that do not have theme, it's 3, 5, 6, 7, and 8, which means that ones that do have theme should be 1, 2, or 4, which they are. All right, so this is all within the same file. It's just splitting out the lines whether they have theme in it or if they don't have theme in it. It can be a really, really handy thing to have. Now, um, one last uh, option that I want to look at is uh, has to do with uh, 
case. And so in this file, in the readme.txt, we can see that there's the word this. So I'm going to just do a grep for this. Um, so grep uh, my string is going to be just the word this. And I, I won't do it in this readme file, so I don't get a million things back. But I get nothing back. And that's because this is capitalized. And this is case specific. If I do this grep again, but change that to a capital T, now I get my result. So you can see there's this and this. They're both capitalized. And there are no lowercase this is. Um, so y there's an option um, so that you don't have to deal with this, uh, which is dash I, which means ignore case. Um, so if I rerun these greps now, it's, well, this is with the capital. So I get the same result set because it, it's capitals. But if I go back and change this now to the lowercase t, I'm going to get the same result set back, whereas before I got nothing. Um, so dash I ignore case. So if you're not sure if there's capital letters or not in what you're looking for, use dash I. One thing to keep in mind is that you can mix and match all of these options, right? You've seen I've done like I did like RL and I did NV. You can put those together after the dash. So you could do, you know, dash R N I V if you wanted to. No problem. Now next I'm going to show sort of an example uh, of how to use this in the real world, like where this might actually be handy in other ways. Uh, I'm just on a website here and, and I've got some uh, some text that's being generated by the site and I want to figure out where it's coming from. How How is that being generated? So I'm just going copying that string from the interface that I saw. Uh, and see I'm in my uh, the root of this website of the Drupal sites directory and I'm going to grep, I'm just going to grep for the string throughout the entire file structure of the site and see who is generating it. And I get a result back and you can see that it's in the coder module includes folder coder style ink and if I do the same command again and put the n I also get the line number. So now I can go to coder style dot ink line 30 and see all of the stuff that's going on around that that's generating that particular text um, and help me you know if I need to troubleshoot or something like that that's a place to get started. Uh, I'll show one other example here which is uh, for uh, handy for theming. Um, I'm just looking, I'm using Firebug here to just look at a uh, at the, the HTML here and you can see I have this particular class uh, on that particular box and let's say I want to figure out how that class is being generated because maybe I want to change it. Again I can grep and I'll do an RN because I, I want to go through the entire directory structure and I want the line number and I'm just going to put that class name in and uh, and say go. And you'll see uh, when I get my results here, um, it gives me the file name uh, and the line number, and there's only one file that's doing this. Um, and so what I can do is um, go to that particular file. So I'm just going to grab this whole path here, uh, and I'm going to just pop this thing open in uh, VI. Let me copy that, um, paste that in. So I'll open that file up, and the line was uh, 1880. So I'll go to the line 1880, uh, and there you go. This is the actual line that's creating that class. Um, and uh, like within Drupal here, if I go up to the function, I can see the function that's doing this. Uh, and this is actually a theme function, which means if I wanted to, I could uh, I could override this theme function and completely change that class that's being output. Now, might not be a real world uh, example in this particular instance, but uh, it shows you how you can use this um, to figure out where things are coming from so that you can then uh, troubleshoot or go in and modify them as you need to. So grep is super useful. I, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can do full regular expression stuff, um, but even without all that, awesome tool. Drupal Eyes, baby.